All right. So um, the last couple of weeks, we've been leading up to the goal setting. We have a couple of weeks left in it. Yesterday, for those that who was in Bob Visor class, I did get your text last night. Yeah. And then I awesome. started. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he does really good um, with that one with his. So finding the why. So I was trying to not overlap things that he was talking about yesterday as I was going into goal setting on why you should be setting your goals, how you set your goals, what holds you back from your goals, and what you can do to not hold yourself back or stand in your own damn way. Um, so goal setting, you can't manage what you don't measure, and you can't improve what you don't manage. Hmm. AKA, track your shit. Yeah. There's probably a lot of uh, spelling errors because just like my last slide, though I actually did this over like two and a half hours yesterday. Um, all right, so five reasons why goal setting will help you improve your focus. Most people just come into real estate like, oh, I'm a realtor now. People are just going to put money in my bank account and leads are just going to come to me. And then they have that oh shit moment. I'm like, oh, it's not easy. And they don't know what to do, why they do it. And then they figure out what they need to do and they write it down and then they just don't do it. Well, all right. So, um, five reasons why goal setting will improve your focus. One, goals trigger behavior. Having a clear, compelling goal mobilizes your focus towards actionable behavior. So what you, when you know and have in front of you what you're supposed to be doing, you're more likely to do it because it's already spelled out for you. It should also motivate you. When you look out on like what you want five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, what you want your retirement to look like, that should excite you. If it doesn't excite you, you should probably pick a different goal of what you want in life. Um, Goals guide your focus. When you set a goal, you naturally direct your attention towards the next step. So again, when you have something like if you want to buy a beach house and it's literally there and you have a picture of a freaking beach house in front of you, every day it's going to remind you of what you're working towards. So when you want to take that phone call or you decide that you don't want to show up to the office that day or make um, time for lead gen. <laughs> I've had three people in lead gen the last couple of days. So I'm talking to the majority of there. Um, so when you don't take the time to actually work on your business and start working in your business, you're going to lose your, your focus of what you're actually going for. Um, goal sustain momentum. When you see the progress and so when you're tracking, you're like, Oh, I need to have 24, you know, closings this year. And now you have two penny, you check it off and you're moving closer. And the more that it starts to happen, and the more you're moving towards your goal, the more motivated you become because you know that you can do it. You stop. That drunk monkey stops for a little bit. Doesn't always stop, but stops for a little bit. I have a bag of drunk monkeys, guys. You guys want a monkey? I found my whole bag. Actually, Logan did because he cleaned out the closet. Huh? Oh, you have my turkey. Tom. His name's Tom the turkey. <laughs> Goals align your focus. So goal setting helps you align your focus with behavior that you get feedback from. So if you keep doing stuff that doesn't work and it's not helping you towards your goals, are you going to continue to do it? You shouldn't, but if you don't know what's not working, you're going to keep doing stuff that's not leading you towards your goals. And then goal setting promotes self-mastery, obviously. When you have it in front of you, you start to build the confidence behind it. And when you start to build confidence behind it, you're going to keep going for it because you start to believe in yourself. Um, we're going to go through this quickly and then go back to it again. My slides, it's probably like two hour class that we're putting into an hour. So bear with me. 12 things successful people do differently. Create smart goals. We're going to go through each one of these as we get to them. Take decisive and immediate action. Focus on being productive, not being busy. That is most realtors problems. Uh, make logical, informed decisions. Avoid the trap of trying to make things perfect. Work outside their comfort zone. Keep things simple. Focus on making small, continuous improvements. Measure and track their progress. Maintain a positive outlook as they learn from their mistakes. Spend time with the right people. We talked about that last week. And maintain a balance in life, which we talked about last week also. So SMART goals. What does that mean? You have to have a specific goal. So it's not just like, I'm going to sell houses this year. I'm going to sell 24 houses this year. I'm going to buy a vacation home. No, I'm going to buy a beach home in Costa Rica. Like it has to be specific, something that is tangible that you can reach. Measurable, track your progress. Again, tracking is your um, inventory of your business. So if you don't know what's working, if you owned 
Like I always say, a convenience store, and you order juice, and you have cherry juice, grape juice, and pineapple juice, and you don't do inventory and just keep ordering that pineapple juice that people don't drink, you're throwing away money and you're wasting time and money on things that are not bringing you money. But then when you have your cherry juice that's flying off and you can't keep it on the shelves, but again, you're not doing inventory, so you don't know, you're losing money by not doubling up on the things that are making you money. So by tracking your business and tracking your calls, you'll know what's working and what's not working. Attainable, set realistic goals that are challenging but achievable. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but if you sold three houses last year, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna sell 80 houses this year? Probably not likely. And then what's gonna happen is you're going to start to disappoint yourself. You're gonna, your confidence is gonna drop and you're gonna go backwards instead of setting small attainable goals. What happens when you get three o'clock in the morning? What, that you? Our face is thinking we're gonna do, you know, all that. Yeah, I, have problems. yeah I got problems. Half of my ideas come. Some of these slides may have been done at 3 a.m. too. <laughs> Agreed. Truthful if anyone needs them. Um, they have to be relevant. So ensure, ensure the goal serves a relevant purpose. So like, I'm going to buy a helicopter. For what? If it serves a purpose in your life. So if you just put out their goals, you're not likely going to obtain them because they mean nothing to your long-term vision. Time. Something that is measurable, and you have to have an end date. So if you're going to sell 24 houses, it's going to be 24 houses in the first quarter. Is it 24 houses in the entire year? Do you break it up monthly on what you're going to do? Set a timeline for every goal. The way that I used to do mine was I would set my year, and then I would set my quarterly, my monthly. So I'm just focusing on what's in front of me at that moment because that long-term goal can be scary. If you're like, oh, I want to do 24 units this year, and I only did 10 last year, that 24 units can be scary. So if you break it up on like, okay, I want to sell two houses that month. Like the two houses is a lot more obtainable than the 24 scaring you off. All right, so when we were talking before about being decisive and taking immediate action, um, you need to act, not continue to learn. They always say, I see people show up in my classes every day, and I appreciate it, but I am not here for your entertainment. I'm here to coach you to the next level of your business. So if you come to class and then you don't put anything into action, what are you doing? I mean, I love entertaining you, but let's do some shit with it, okay? Focus on being productive, not being busy. How do you measure your success? At the end of the day, do you feel like you did so much, but really, what did you do? Some people go home and they're like, oh my God, I did so much work today. And then you sit down and you're like, what the did I do today? Some people measure their success by the amount of tasks that they can fit into a week. I'm like, I did a hundred things this week. I must do. This is where people get so passive. I sent out flyers. I did eight Facebook posts and I did, but what did you really do? You didn't do anything. You made yourself feel good. And then you start to have the problem. Anthony, I'm going to pick on you because you just said it because you wake up at three o'clock in the morning because your brain can't shut down. Why can't your brain shut down? Because you can't measure what you did in the day to feel like you did enough. When you set your goal for the day of I'm going to make 10 calls, I'm going to get two new listings, and I'm going to get a buyer under contract. That's a lot for a day for an average agent. But if you go in and you're doing that, stay tuned. No, just kidding. <laughs> I know. Um, so as you go through doing that, as you hit your goals, at the end of the day, you feel like you can relax and you can shut down because you're looking at you completed everything you needed to do. Now, if you set out and you wanted to have 10 conversations and send out 100 flyers and you get home and you're like, well, I made eight Facebook posts and I talked to the neighbor and I went to, you know, the happy hour that the other agent was you know, showing and I had a really long, busy day. But you sit down there and you didn't accomplish the goals that you set for the day. Your brain's not going to shut down your brain knows you did not know or do what you were supposed to do that day. Make logical, informed decisions. Do not make decisions in the moment. It's not like, oh, this is why these people call you all the time. I have leads. You know, we want to connect with a Philly agent, blah, 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 blah. And some people are like, I'm so down in my business right now. Yes, I'll buy anything. Sit on it. Like my rule with my 11 year old, come back to me in a week. If you want to still buy it, then we'll have a conversation about it. But in this moment, we're not buying it. Okay, plan them out, review them, search, then implement. 
it may work for you, but do the research on what it's going to look like for your business, what it's going to do, what is the purpose behind it? If it's just to grasp on something right now, is that a long-term focus that you're looking on? Probably not. Avoid the trap of trying to be or to make things perfect. Stop setting standards for yourself that you cannot uphold long term. So I talk about this all the time, too. If you're a new agent and you have one or two clients right now and you're going above and beyond for these clients. Can you do the same thing when you have 10, 15 buyers at the same time? If you can't uphold that same standard for 10 to 15 buyers, do not set that standard for one or two. Because next time when that buyer now buys a house and they want to sell it in seven years and now you're selling nine times the amount that you were then, they're going to compare how you are now to how you were then. And when you try to reach perfection, you're working continuously in your business, not on your business. Remember, your 100%, people don't know what your 100% is. They're okay with 80%. Spend that 20% doing something else to make more money. Work outside your comfort zone. You will never feel 100% ready. Like if you sit down, you're like, am I ready to get married? Am I ready to have kids? Am I ready to launch my new business? In your mind, it's always going to be no. It's the same thing in real estate. You will never know everything. Questions will always come up. If you're Even if you're on the phone and you're not sure what to say, just let it flow. You can't teach somebody a conversation. Just have a conversation. I guarantee if someone yells at you, if someone hangs up on you, you will not die. <laughs> it's going to feel uncomfortable, but feed off of that gut uncomfortable feeling, okay? You know what else gives you a gut uncomfortable feeling? Not being able to pay your bills. Which uncomfortable do you want, okay? As I just spit down myself. It's not Holy shit, that's really small. It looked a lot bigger on my screen when I was making this, guys. <laughs> Bear with me. I don't, can I make it bigger? Oh, Caitlin. Gonna We're just going to roll with it. Just read every point. Yeah. All right. So, I am. I'm not going to go into the thing. So, 10 things that hold you back from your goals. Fear is the number one. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of being ridiculed, and fear of disappointment. People get stuck in that fear where it's like, if I don't do it, I'm not going to disappoint someone. If I don't do it, I'm not going to be hurt. But if you don't do it, what's on the other side of the fear? Regret. Regret. Oh, I like that one. Yes, we're going to watch this. You're going to always want to this one. Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to make a bit of a roll.
I couldn't say it as good as he could. I've shared that a million times in my years of coaching, and it's something that I still go back to. The fear will literally paralyze you out of success, okay? Now, this next one's long, but we're going to cut to different parts of it because I had a friend send it to me last week. He might be sitting in this class right now talking about James. I'm going to give it a three minute minute. Oh my God. Oh, time for commercials.
All right, guys, it's okay to fail. You're going to have points in your business that you are going to fail. You cannot have success without the failure first. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel the pain. You're going to feel the ups and downs. That pain that you get from your failure is only going to launch or launch you further. Okay. I've opened businesses. I have closed businesses. I have failed many times. I've done the bankruptcy thing. I've done it all. You will not get anywhere without learning from them first. You can't run from them. You can't hide. But you can go through it. And on the other side, I guarantee your future self will thank you one day to keep going. And not only that, with the pain and not talking about it, we all have the same fears. Talk about them. Find out what you are so fearful of. And talk to somebody about how you can overcome them. Overcome them together. You're not in this alone. That's part of the reason why you're in this office is because there's so many people here that want to help you get past the fear that is holding you back from the next part of your business. Jumping back into it, guys. I don't know if I'm an idiot. I just really wasn't following yeah. Which is probably no. <laughs> what is, what is, what is she talking about? So in the beginning of it, she like, was uh, in the beginning, it's basically beginning? like it was saying, like when you did something for a minute the day before, but now you did it for a minute and six seconds. You did it a oh, little bit just better than that. Okay. In the beginning, she's talking about it where um she went to yoga and everybody was like, What I plan on taking from this yoga, and she said it was like in like a thousand degrees in this room and here it was called hot yoga and she's like oh these people are doing this on, on purpose like so then everyone's like all these big goals that they're throwing out and her goal was that she was just going to survive that class and the instructor told her to just sit and do nothing and she said that was the hardest 90 minutes of her life was just sitting there in her thoughts because everything in life whenever we start to get that pain or we get a little bit uncomfortable we want to scroll through Facebook. When we pick up our phone to call somebody that we haven't talked to in 10 years, all of a sudden we're on TikTok and we're trying to hit the easy button to get out of feeling that uncomfortable moment. But when you feel that uncomfortable moment and you live through it, your uncomfortable moments are going to lead you to the success at the end. If you go back from the beginning. Okay. So you left out the beginning. That's why I'm going so, but did everyone else get re just sitting in it and doing better than you were the day before? Okay. <laughs> I'll send you the full 23 minutes of it towards the end of it. Actually, I guess we should get through the whole thing with this. All right. So we talked about fear. Excuses. Excuses. You, you guys will literally excuse yourselves out of the business if you give yourself excuses over and over and over again. Um, with the people that I coach, what I have them do and what I used to do is I used to sit there with my time lock in front of me with a freaking post-it. I should have stock in post-its. And I would put a post-it. Every time you have an excuse, write your excuse on the post-it. And at the end of the week, go back. And is that excuse greater than what you were supposed to be doing. Half the time when you go to write the excuse, you're like, this is so flippin' stupid. I don't even wanna write it. I make my coaching clients turn their excuses into me so I can tell them that that excuse was stupid in that moment. So if that excuse is greater, and that is not always an, an excuse too, because I always tell some people, if you see a pattern in your excuses, maybe it's not an excuse. Like if it, I wrote down, I couldn't do this because I had to go pick my son up from school and that is a continuous thing, then picking your son up from school is just something that you need to time lock in your schedule. It's not an excuse. So you'll start to learn the difference between actual excuses and things that need to go into your business. Procrastination, putting things off till next week, next month, next year, or often forever. You're never quite sure what you're waiting for, but whatever it is happens, 
you're ready to begin pursuing your goal. You don't know what you're putting off. It's just like, oh, I'll start that next week. It's people with diets. Oh, I'll start the first of the month. I'll start Monday. And then it's Wednesday. It's like, oh, I screwed up. I'll start back on Monday. Why not start again in that moment? The same thing with your calls. Like, oh, I didn't track. I didn't, you know, there's no way I'm going to hit 10 calls today. So I'm just not going to do it at all. Just make two then. Still more than you would have done if you didn't put it off. Lack of belief. You need to believe in yourself. What goes on in our subconscious mind has an impact on our actions or lack of actions. If you don't believe in yourself, you will talk yourself out of doing the action because you don't think that you can do it. You don't believe that you are meant to be successful. You don't believe that you are meant to be independent or a business owner. We hold negative self-limiting beliefs, which could be holding us back from living an amazing life. That's the drunk monkey that I talk about all the time. Mine's pink. No, he doesn't have a name. I have a whole bag of them. They're super cute, guys. Lack of focus. Every time you lose focus, it kills your chance of success. Lack of big picture. Big picture. For you. Your goal is to work for you. They need to help you realize your dream. If you don't know what you're doing this for, then what are you, what is driving you to show up every single day? That should have been your class yesterday. You figured out your big picture, figuring out your why. And it's okay if your why changes. It's okay if your big picture changes. As you, as you have life changes, they will change, but it's all part of the same journey. Not having a plan. A plan gives you the maps. Can you imagine saying like, and I drive it nine times a year. I'm going to drive to North Carolina and I'm going to do it without my GPS. I would end up in like Canada trying to go to North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> I need to put it in my GPS. So I have something to follow to get me there. I see the progress as it's happening. Nine hours, eight hours, four hours. Christ, I'm almost there. Okay. Where if you don't map it out. And like I said, I've been driving that eight to nine times a year for the last six, seven years. I should know my way, but I still put it in a GPS every single time. I don't care if you've been in the business 30 years, you still need to put it on a piece of paper and follow a plan or you're going to get lost at some point. Not taking action, choosing to take action and pursuing your goals, specifically designed to take you on the right path instead of indulging in activities that only bring temporary happiness. We are, as, humor, uh, as, humors, as humans, we want that instant satisfaction or that instant gratification. So we're going to do whatever in the moment makes us feel good. But remember, everything that you do now is for 90 to 120 days from now. So if you're not seeing the results today, we just quickly want to stop because it's not feeding that instant gratification. But if you set your goals to what you need to do in this 15 minutes, this hour, this day, this week, and you see like, oh, I just accomplished it. My instant gratification is taking my red pen and crossing out my freaking task. That's like the best thing in the world to me because I see it happening. And if you cross down every single task throughout the day, you're going to hit your goals. But if you're like, if I'm like, oh, this isn't for, you know, this isn't helping. I'm not making money here. If you stop now, you're not going to make money 90 days from now either. It'll eventually become a snowball effect if you do not give up. Not reviewing your progress and making adjustments. Again, we talked about earlier your inventory. Giving up too soon. We all hit points when it seems like um, going on is next to impossible. When you're already overwhelmed, it's easy to talk yourself into giving up. You never know how soon you might start seeing progress if you just hang in there and give it a little bit more time. Again, that goes to the 90 days. Or I'm doing it. I made calls for a week. I didn't get shit. And now all of a sudden you're like, I'm done. What if, what if that next call was the listing appointment you've been waiting for? What if that was your big break? Just one more. Why do I feel like I'm out of order here? Sue. So, step 
step one of a business plan is to figure out, well, step one is figuring out what you're in the business for. What is your why? What are your goals that you want to reach? What does retirement look like? What does 10 years look like? What is five years? What does three years? What does next year look like for you? If you don't know what you're working for, you don't know how to get there. Okay? I want to retire by the time I'm 45. I know how many units I need to buy in order for that to happen. So if I don't do work today, I'm not retiring and now a lot sooner than it was a couple of days ago. But I have, I have six years left, okay, to retirement. So if I don't buy another rental property this year, my doors are going to be thrown off for how many I need at 45, okay? So now I need to figure out what's the down payment that I'm looking for on my next rental property. So I need to add that into my monthly bills are this, putting away for kids hockey because that's another gazillion dollars right there. And then I need X, Y, and Z for my next rental property, or I want to pay off of a car or whatever you want to do. Figure out what that means as a dollar figure. You want to start with the dollar figure first. The dollar figure is what will cause the pain, pain versus pleasure. A dollar unassigned is a dollar unearned. If you don't know what your money is going to, it's not going to hurt if you don't make it. Promise your kids a trip to Disney. And then don't sell a house and then go back and look your kids in the face and tell them that they're not going to Disney. That's more uncomfortable than picking up the phone. So assign every dollar that you're making. And it can just be like, I want to have 100000 in savings by the end of the year. I don't care what it is, but assign it to something. After that, when you go through it, Did Justin do this a couple weeks ago? Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm not going to fully go into it then. So you're going to put your number into here. That was, I think, supposed to be 200000 So say you want to make 200000 Remember, you never want to assume more than 40%. I do 30%. Um, figure out your expenses for the year, your average sales price. So if this year, if you're just going off of national statistics, this is national statistics. Uh, conversion rates for buyers versus sellers, but you need to know your conversions. If you don't know your conversions exact, if you don't know your average sales price exact, your business plan will never be exact. Once you put all of that in, you'll scroll over and it'll tell you exactly how many houses you need to sell that year to hit your goal. How many Contracts do you need? Total listings is listings or buyers. How many appointments based on your conversions? If you don't know your conversions, this is going to be the national statistics. Now, if you start to track your numbers, you will know exactly how many dials it takes you to get to a conversation. How many conversations does it take you to get to... A lead. How many leads does it take to get to an appointment? You should be able to look at these appointments and say, okay, in order to do that, I need to have 2,067 dials this year. How many dials does that mean you need to have today? You work backwards off of your numbers. So most that are in my coaching, because they have to report their numbers to me every single week, they'll show me their numbers and I'm say, you're on track of where you were last year. So most statistics and most people that are in my coaching, they average 10 conversations per one lead, four leads per appointment. They know their average sales price. So every time they pick up the phone, they can be like, oh, I dialed the phone. Someone didn't answer, but I just made $7.21 because they know how much each dial is worth to them. Or I can say, okay, to still hit your goal by the end of the year, we need to make sure that you're having, you know, 32 conversations this week in order for that to happen. You won't know exactly what you need to do every single day or how many people you need to talk to if you don't track your numbers. I cut out like half of this because it was like way over an hour. So I made it into two different classes. But All right. Ask questions.
Sorry, Ed. I'll send it out to everybody too that was on. Anybody have any questions on where to start setting up goals? So for the months of, where are we in? October? The month of November, I have um, appointments open on Tuesdays and Fridays for those that are not in coaching to sit down and do your business plan with me. Come in, set an appointment, 30 minutes to talk about your goals. You have to come in with the dollar figure that you want to make in 24. We're not going to figure it out together. You need to figure out who you are before you get to me. And then we will sit down and we'll do your numbers and we'll make a rough draft on how you can get to that the next year. If you have a team, you should have one, a GPS for your team. And then each individual person on your team should also have their own goals. Any questions on setting up goals? Any ahas today? Anything that you're going to take out of this class and implement? Or do we just come for entertainment? Thanks. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> no one? Nothing? I want to do the sticky note. I'm doing the sticky note. You, sh you should. I have I need for sticky notes. everything. I used to yell, my, yell at myself on sticky notes. She's got me doing another thing with sticky notes. Hi. 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 I, I want to, I think my like goal from this class is like believing in myself. Like I stopped for a while and like, I don't want to do that. I think that's bullshit, you know? So make the call. Don't, don't let the fear override your success. I agree. So I'm going to say the same thing that I said, said to you about two months ago when you sat in my chair when you were thinking about coming over. Yeah. <laughs> I did this with you years ago. I have watched your ups and downs, and you need to just remember who the hell you are. Who the hell I am. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because you know you can do it. You have done it before, and you will do it again, but it all comes back to the belief. Yes, and uh, it's a powerful thing. I will say that. So. I'm excited to watch it happen for you. I Welcome. know. Look at you, cutie. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have any ahas? I just think it's so hard to remember. Like, you have a planner and stuff. I'm not a stuff person. I don't like carrying stuff. I don't like reading stuff. And I like you, I got a planner. You told me to. It's just so hard to like, okay, I can write in it. Then it's like, I'm just going to leave it out. Well, so that's the, the that's, hardest I, part. I'm just like very like, like I don't carry like a purse. I can't do stuff because I need stuff everywhere. It, like the other day I left pizza on my, put in my car. Like the, the week, like for your yeah. week, set a whole week and put reminders in your phone. I think I need an alarm to be like, mm -hmm. well, it also comes call, back did you call this to do a business yeah. in this same spot every day. When you set your routine, you will not forget. But if you're like, oh, I'm going to work here or I'm going to work here and you're going back and forth and you're going everywhere, you're going to leave shit everywhere. I don't leave my desk. Like I work in the same spot every day to the point that I'm so flipping OCD that like when I leave, my book's a certain way, my pen's a certain way, my desk is a certain way, my post-its for the next day are set up. Like everything is set up for the next day because I'm right, I don't have to take it home. But you if I was running back, break. what? You would go get a long break. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Um, but <laughs> as you go through your day, it will start to create the habit. So if you put your book every day at the door, you're gonna know where it's at. If you only work in your office or in the same spot every day at home, it's in one or two spots. And what I do is like, so if I know I'm working from home or if I'm going home for the weekend and God forbid, you never know if I'm gonna get hit by a bus, someday I pray for it, but you Ooh. want to work from home and say like, I'm just gonna stay home today. It's okay to work from home, but take what you need. So I have my work bag that's on my chair. So every Friday it goes in the work bag, the work bag comes home with me and then on Monday it gets unpacked again. So if you make it a habit to have your book in front of you every single day and then at the end of the day, close it and put it in a bag that you know you're taking that bag with you wherever you go, it's going with you. 
It doesn't happen overnight, but success doesn't happen overnight either. Start the planner. If you want to do it on your phone, the reason I don't like it on the phones is because when you go to check your schedule, then you end up on TikTok. You have to take away, but some people don't have the self-control to be able to do it. I have to write it to be able to see it. The more that I can take things out of my phone so I don't get lost answering that text message or returning someone's call when I'm supposed to be looking at something else, the better. Some people, the phone works perfect for it. I do have all of my appointments, so if you ever see my crazy time block, you have that, but then I also have everything in my calendar also. So I do only appointments. Like I don't have all of my busy work in there because that's just going to be done when I'm sitting there anyway. But try it for like, okay, I'm going to time block Monday for two hours. If you don't get to the two hours, how far did you get? If you get an hour, then great. Tomorrow, do an hour. The next day, do an hour and 10 minutes. And just build up until you're blocking the whole day. Really, you want to only block four hours. You block all day long. But four hours is like, okay, I'm doing my appointments. I time block my whole life, so it's different. Like, my kids' hockey schedules are in there, so I know I can't schedule around it. You know, any appointments are in there. And then I time block the Legion, any classes, and then I time block my busy work in there. So this way, say you get an appointment, I can be like, oh, I have Tuesday at 4 open or Wednesday at 6. Like, you know your appointments by time blocking them. But really, the bulk of it is you're supposed to be time blocking your Legion. So start with time blocking your Legion, and you can protect that, then add on little by little. The other stuff necessarily isn't a time block that you're sitting there trying to keep. You're just blocking it out so you don't overbook yourself. Because if you overbook yourself, you're giving yourself excuses not to do the work. So if you block the important stuff in, that time is just time in your day that's not work. The time that you should be focusing on is really four hours a day. And if you really look at a true time block, that's what it is. You're blocking the four hours. It's just the other times you don't want to overbook your schedule. So give yourself a challenge and then every day, like I literally, Sean, Sean Jones isn't, he wasn't in here, right? I have a text message from him probably like two months ago. So he went through my program. I was going to say when he was young, but he's still young, but he was very, very young when he went through my program. And the time blocking was so hard for him. And we used to do challenges, him and I don't know if you guys know who Charlie is. So they would come in and I would have to initial their time block. Every Monday, they would show me their time block. And then if they protected their time block after so many weeks and they would set up their goals, they would reward themselves with something. I think Charlie's was like a bottle of whiskey or something like that. But whatever it was, that was their reward. And I had to check it and they had to report back to me every single day before it came an actual habit. And then a couple months ago, Sean texts me, he goes, I'm working from home and I don't have my book. My anxiety is going crazy. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm the same way. If I don't have my book, there was a couple Mondays ago. I ran out the door. I went out. One of my kids missed the bus. So I was like, I'll drive you to the school, blah, 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 blah. Left it and have my work bag. So I get here and my schedule is the same thing every day. Like every Monday, my time block's the same. Every Tuesday, my time block's the same. So I know my schedule. But the fact that it wasn't in front of me, I literally felt like I couldn't breathe and I called my husband. I made him drive my bag to me and he's like, I can't get there for an hour. And I was like, I was like, can you drop it off first? Like I literally could not function without it because that habit. And that's like people that like going to the gym. Clearly not me. So I don't know if this is the same thing, but from what I hear, people that enjoy going to the gym, if you go to the gym at the same time every morning, the days that you don't go to the gym, your whole day's thrown off. It's the same thing with creating that habit with something else. Um, in your business. So create one habit. Don't try to do 10 different things at once. If you try to create too many habits at the same time, you won't accomplish any of them. You want to do one and then have it stack. Once you that one hurts, if you don't do it, then add a different one on. It's a journey that you're going to continue to go on. Okay. It's not going to happen overnight and it's okay to mess up. It's okay to fall off as long as you restart the next day. If you keep finding yourself every day on like, I can't do the time block, I can't do the time block, take it back down to just one day. Take it back down to one hour. Same thing with your calls. If your goal is I'm going to do, you know, 100 calls for the week, 
and then you hit 50, stay with the 50. But then next week when you're doing it, set it for 50. If you're only you're supposed to be doing 10 a day, you're only doing three, don't just throw your hands in the air and be like, I suck, I'm not doing this. Then set the goal for four. Do one more than you did the day before until you reach that 10. And then if you fall off one day, then take a step back and start over. It's okay. We all mess up. It's part of the journey. Any other questions, comments? I've been sweating bullets, guys. God. All right. You guys are such a lively bunch that we're going to leave it on that. We can't hear over all your excitement. Those at home, thanks for joining. Um, next week, actually, let me stop the recording.